Well, hi there. If you're new here, my name is Rusty, and this is my channel where I talk about my favorite horror movies and movies in general and my favorite music. Um, music has been sparse. Uh, I was in the middle. No, I was at the. I was at the tail end of doing my top 10 Nightwish songs when I blew my 20-year-old JBL computer speakers. Beautiful. And so I've ordered a new pair of nice speakers. Finding computer speakers are really hard because everything is, you know, they want it small and compact and that doesn't give good sound. So finding, you know, nice, you know, speakers that put out actual music sound is pretty difficult but I managed to find some 10 inch speakers and uh, but yeah I was down to my last two Nightwish songs and obviously my speakers just gave up the ghost and I blew the woofers out so <laughs> don't listen to Nightwish too loud is the lesson to that on 20 year old speakers anyway so I'll get back to that when the speakers come but in the meantime we're going back to some movies um, Tonight I want to talk about a little movie from 1987 called Black Widow. Absolutely adore this movie. Some people might be going, well, is that a horror movie? Well, I don't know. You tell me. Is Seven a horror movie? Is Silence of the Lambs a horror movie? There's all kinds of subgenres. There's no blood and gore in this one, but there's lots and lots of evil. It is rated R. It's, um just shocking to me and it's uh one of the best action thri i mean not action thriller horrors that you know has ever been made in my opinion so black widow was released in 1987 and it stars teresa russell and deborah winger and sammy frey with some interesting cameos you have dw moffett um dennis hopper uh leo rossi uh, who else? Um, Mary Warnoff. It's already it's always you know great to always see Mary Warnoff. And so yeah, there's some interesting cameo roles. Diane Ladd. She is also in this. Um, and yeah, so let's get on the road and talk about Black Widow. Why my little heart wants to keep twisting? I don't know. Well, yeah, I do. That is kind of the story of me life, isn't it? Twisted heart. Well, anyway. Black Widow, like I said, it stars Teresa Russell and Deborah Winger. Now, uh, when the movie opens, you are introduced to Teresa Russell, who is playing a character as Catherine, which is what the title, uh, what the cast lists her as, despite that she changes names often during the movie. And Deborah Winger is a special forces operations with the FBI. Um, so she's, uh, well, they all kind of are law enforcement, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So we're introduced to Teresa Russell as she is seemingly happy in a marriage, and um, she kills him. She kills him with poison, um, you know, which should be, it's Black Widow, you know what I mean? So we get introduced to her and Deborah at the same time. Now, Deborah Winger is, like I said, a Special Forces uh, investigator for the FBI. And um, she is kind of frustrated. She's been in the investigative building for six years, um, you know, with green windows, paint on the windows, you know, because it's secrets, right? And... Um, yeah, so she's kind of like a little frustrated from being in there. And during this time, of course, we're seeing Teresa Russell move on to the next man. And uh, yeah, so let's take our first lay-by from the road and talk a little a bit about Deborah Winger's character, Alexandra. Now, unless you're in these fields of, you know, work, unless you're in these professions... Everybody seems to think of, you know, CIA, FBI, uh, police, you know, the devil. They're, they're all the same. They're all law, en law enforcement. And although that is true, that people within different agencies are law enforcement in the giant umbrella 
sort of way. Um, there is a really big difference between detectives and detective-like professions such as FBI investigators, criminal psychologists, forensic psychologists, uh, criminal and uh, forensic and psychological investigators with the DIPL. Um, you know, regular cops are sort of like, I don't know, I really don't want to get into that subject, <laughs> but they're, they're not really about um, intellectual detective work, you know, they're just sort of like the trying to tread lightly here, aren't we? Um, they're just sort of like law enforcement, what you would think of as law enforcement. They're sort of like the bulldogs. The investigators are the brainy ones who are, you know, deep diving into who, what, when, where, and why. And the devil goes and arrests the person that the detectives discover, you know, so you get the point. So, um, Deborah, Deborah Winger's character, Alexandra, definitely follows that pattern. People in those professions, detectives and investigators, they are by nature um, very different. They're suspicious, they're paranoid, they're observant. All of the things that go into making a, you know, an uh, investigator, uh, which is a lot different than the hands-on, you know, law enforcement work of, of like I said, a regular cop. So... <sighs> She sort of stumbles upon this story, an investigation that she was already in about what she believed was the assassination of a mobster. Um, they tried to convince her, you know, her office tried to convince her that, you know, you're on the wrong track. I mean, there is this thing called Ogden's Curse, and people do die in their sleep of natural causes without there being foul play. So as they're trying to convince her of that, her assistant gives her an example of a case that had happened recently where a middle-aged man, a, a millionaire, had died of this same disease. So, you know, she begrudgingly accepts the possibility that the mobster may have just died in his sleep, but that's how she hears about this, this disease. So things go ahead. And you're watching Teresa Russell uh, move from man to man, you know, plotting, planning, and killing, marrying and killing man like a black widow. So um, her second murder of the movie, um, since her, since uh, Alexandra's assistant had been paying attention, this second murder kind of he sees it on the wire. And he like, oh yeah, you know, remember what we were talking about a few weeks ago? Well, here's another guy that died of the same thing. See, I was right. I told you sometimes people die that way. And um, Alexandra kind of like, really? Somebody else died of it? And it kind of makes her want to, being the investigator, being, you know, a curious person. Because people in those professions are often very nosy and curious and suspicious and so she's like what another middle-aged millionaire died of this rare type condition you know and um, that's where she gets it that's where the you know her curiosity is peaked and she kind of asks her assistant you know can you get can you know give me the case files of these two dead guys and you know and they're their wives or, or whatever and that's how she sort of gets into it so she's bored at home and she has gotten as many pictures and photos of these men and, the, and their wives as she can and as she's watching it she really gets this feeling inside that those two women from these two very different men they don't they look alike but not quite and she just really gets curious about it because something inside of her says you know that looks like the same girl that looks like the same woman now we as the audience know that it is the same woman 
and that's how she sort of gets um, you know curious about this and she starts investigating this this woman and gets really highly interested in uh, digging into the details now we, we're going to switch now to Teresa Russell's character Teresa Russell you know playing Catherine is very very it's a fan she did a fantastic job because this character is so fascinating in that um, her ability to be a chameleon you know as they sort of like focus in and let you see her operate you know her her you know motives and operations a modus operandi um, she sort of chooses these victims and becomes a different person different name different background different look to attract that particular person the person that she targeted now one of the frustrating yet very interesting things about this movie about this film is that there is a scene where after Alexandra has gotten so obsessed she is literally going to quit her job because we have a third person that dies and she had actually met this guy in her you know curiosity of this woman so she had actually met this man even you know because she had now had suspicions and she was like you know I can't prove any of this but that woman she I know she's killed twice and I'm, I'm sure that this is the woman and so she actually is like getting kind of bold and, and actually kind of gets in there and she meets the husband and because um, now Catherine has married for a third time in the film and she actually meets this guy and sure enough he ends up dead now this really affects her Alexandra this really affects her in a weird way because it's 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 m different because she has actually been four feet from this person she has actually spoke with this person she even you know she feels very guilty because I should have warned him I should have said something even though we all know and her boss tries to tell her that you know this guy what you're gonna say what <laughs> he's not gonna believe you yeah I mean you know what what evidence do you have you know these are just suspicions but so she literally threatens to quit to go pursue this woman and there is a particularly interesting scene and it's very very important um, and that's one of the reasons I love this because you know that's what I went to college for criminal psychology um, and I was around this type of stuff so it's very interesting to me and they say something very very true and I'll tell you now um, her boss you know she's going in pursuit of this woman she has a lead that she's taken off to Hawaii so she's actually gonna quit her job and you know he comes to her apartment her boss does and they have this scene in which you know he's like you know you're you're so obsessed with her and you know are you sure you're doing the right thing you know and I'm like worried about you and um, you know and Alexandra's like well what are you scared for me you know I can take care of myself and this woman isn't about guns anyway and um, so he ends up you know kind of like going well you're not gonna quit I'm not gonna let you quit but I you know you're on extended leave you're still part of the FBI but I'm going you know I'm just gonna cover for you and and I'm gonna let you do this but he then asked her you know why do you think that this woman is doing this if true if your suspicions are true why do you think that she's doing this now Deborah Winger's character Alexandra is actually a little shocked after all he is the boss so and I can vouch for this that it is true and she was kind of shocked that he asked that question because there is no answer to that question and he should have known that you know I mean he's her boss so he should know that so she like 
so it takes the piss on him um which means uh um jokes with him uh plays a joke on him uh she basically is starts giving him a completely false story about her childhood you know, saying that she had this abusive stepfather and he used to beat her and stuff like that. And uh, she was, you know, grew up with so much resentment. So this woman obviously must have some resentment against middle-aged men. But as she's telling him this, he's just like totally into it. And he's really looking at her like, you know, she's giving him the secrets of the universe. And when she looks at him as she finishes this little story, she begins to laugh at him sort of hilariously you know and is like are you buying this shit <laughs> and he's like oh fuck man <laughs> so and and she's like you know better than that you know that there is nobody knows why anybody does anything and that is very true if you think that FBI CIA criminal profilers and stuff like that if you think from stuff you may have seen in movies and TV that they know why serial killers, murderers, abusers, people, why they do what they do. They don't. They don't. We can make profiles. You can have educated guesses. You can see traits and stuff. Profiling is real. Um, they do share traits and there are things that, you know, but why did Ted Bundy do what he did? Was it to get back at his mother? Was it the power trip? Was it he's a psychotic? Was it he a sexual sadist? You can say all of these things. And a, and a profiler can say all of these things. And there's threads, you know. And, and there may be some things that are true. Uh, things that are a part of it. But do we know why they do what they do? Not really. Only, a, you know, because you're not crazy. You're not a sociopath. You're not a psychopath. You cannot go there. You think you can, but you can't. So you'll never really know why someone like that is doing what they're doing. And the frustrating thing about this movie, which makes it also very interesting, is they stick to that. It is so fascinating the way Catherine chooses her target, chooses her next target. She finds, she chooses a target she becomes everything and they show you a little of that um they show you how once she has picked a target she becomes what she believes and it's usually true she's dead on accurate uh, she becomes the woman that that guy would find perfect changes her look changes her education changes her background changes her interests studies everything about what she believes that guy is into you know if she chooses an archaeologist as her target she becomes an expert at archaeology and now you're talking about a woman who has millions and millions of dollars because of the husband she's killed and inherited and yet she's chilled she still chooses another victim what is her trauma what is her deal why is she doing this you know, it's obviously not financial gain because the bitch has millions and millions of personal money that she has made from marrying and murdering millionaires, three of which we know of, and yet she's still doing it. And the movie doesn't tell you. It allows you to kind of go, I don't know why she is continuing to do this. And that's because in reality, in real life, we don't know why people do these kinds of things. We know a little bit, but we don't know why they're doing it. So that's kind of frustrating that it doesn't give you that information, but at the same time, it is the truth and you just have to deal with it. In real life, that is the truth. So, and another thing is her ability to be such a chameleon because when she's going after this one guy, she looks a certain way, talks, dresses, walks, she is this person and how when she finishes killing him and she is brutal when she finishes killing him and moves on to the next target 
which it looks i mean from the movie it looks like she's going through about one millionaire every three years you know so no telling how many guys this woman has killed but uh it's it, it's just flawless the way that they put this movie together so that you are following this completely evil woman and she is that woman kills with a smile on her face and she has such a routine she basically becomes this new person gets this guy to marry her make sure she's got all her ducks in a row wills how everything is set up business wise then she goes away for a trip three four five days and he dies while she's gone because she finds these really unique ways to murder them to kill them with poison that cannot be detected like one she kills because she finds out that she ha he has an allergy to penicillin so she puts penicillin in his toothpaste and then goes on a trip for five days knowing that he's gonna brush his teeth right and he's gonna have anaphylactic shock looks like a heart attack and he's gonna die so that is a phenomenal you know part of the movie so now that Alexandra has become obsessed with Catherine she follows her to Hawaii where um, Catherine has become yet another person she is now a fair-haired, light, you know, what, dishwater blonde, I think is what they call it, uh, beach gal, rich, and she's already got her hooks into another man, and Alexandra, you know, finds her on the island, and they actually become friends. So she is actually friends with uh, Catherine. Who's not, who's, whose name now is Rennie. And um, she ends up, there's, there's this a really interesting cat and mouse. Because you have to remember, Teresa Russell's character is devious, suspicious, paranoid, and as observant as a Black Widow would be. But so is she. So is Alexandra. Alexandra, you see, she's they're sort of like the good side and the bad side of that personality type. They're but they both actually kind of have the same mentality as far as being able to see inside someone, being able to tell what's going on, and I think that that's why Alexandra became obsessed with her is because she is sort of like a mirror image of her psychologically except of course Deborah Winger's not crazy and murderous so aside from the psychopathic part they have the same personality makeup as far as those kind of things go and I think that's why she became obsessed with her so um, on the island there is a big cat and mouse because Alexandra is seriously worried about the guy she's with as you can imagine and while at the same time she's trying not to give off any red flags because she knows this girl can catch her just like that and she knows this girl can kill her too right <laughs> i mean this woman is not above killing anyone she is a serial killer who has killed an numerous uncountable number of of men so far because who knows like I said they don't tell you but she's obviously in her mid 30s and she's obviously been doing this for quite a while so there's a lot of really interesting scenes between the two of them as they're playing this little cat and mouse game and the whole time because we as the audience find out pretty early on in the friendship Teresa Russell's character Rennie at this time she does realize that this is the girl that has been tracking her 
So we as the audience know that she knows and you're waiting for her to do something. <coughs> Florida weather sucks. So you keep waiting for her to kill her or something because we know that she knows that this is the person who's been tracking her because she calls some of the family of the former men she has killed and finds out that a woman has been asking questions about her. She knows this is her. So it all ties up in the end. She goes away on a trip. She actually encourages Deborah Winger and the guy she's with at the time to have an affair, and they do. So Deborah Winger has now had an affair with the guy that she has targeted. Once that, that affair is going on, um, you kind of wonder what is Teresa Russell up to in encouraging and setting up this affair between the guy she's with and what she knows is an FBI agent who has befriended her. Well, we find out when she goes on the trip and we are led to believe that he is dead, just like all the others that she has done. But she had also set up Deborah Winger to take the fall. And it was a, it's a perfect mousetrap. You know, she sets her up to where um, she set up the affair and had the exact same private little squirmy you know, low-life private detective that Deborah Winger had used to find her on the island, she has went and got the same detective to go and take pictures of Deborah Winger and her boyfriend, her fiancé, engaging in an affair. Um, now, the whole time you're like, what is she up to? You know, why is, you know, how is this all going to come down? And um, now that he's dead it all does come down because she goes and that's it's it's a pretty interesting scene where um Catherine the psycho kills the private detective and leaves the photos the the pack of photos on his desk of Deborah Winger and her fiance so the boyfriend's dead the private detective is dead and there's pictures of Deborah Winger and the boyfriend obviously being investigated by someone because the private detective has pictures of them engaged in an affair on his desk in a report so Deborah Winger is accused of killing the boyfriend out of jealousy and killing the private detective for knowing about it and she is taken off to jail so you're like okay that was good <laughs> so the psycho comes back from her trip absolute innocent like she always has she's going to get more tens of millions of dollars and she goes to see uh, Alexandra in prison now, there is a cop there, but the cop, the guard, um, is standing too close, and actually, Alexandra tells the guard to go way back in the back of the room, so, you know, so they can have some privacy, and the guard, that should have been the first sign, actually, to Rennie, um, that something was up because a guard isn't going to do that you know just because you say hey can you give us some privacy with my with my visitor guards usually aren't going to do that yeah <laughs> but uh, the guard goes way back there but I don't think that Catherine or Rennie uh, we'll just call it Catherine I don't think that Catherine really caught that you know because I would have caught that I'd have been like since when do you tell a guard to go back to give you some privacy they don't do that but uh now that they're alone, you know, she sort of tells Rennie, you know, how did you accomplish this? How did you kill him? You weren't even here, you know, and 
it's not that she comes out and admits it, but um, she comes real close to admitting it, and in her own subtle way, she admits it, and she's just like, you know, you wanted to play a game? I always win these games, you know? So, that's, that's where you're, the audience, that's where we're all left, is, you know, it looks like she's the winner, and it looks like Deborah Winger is going to prison for murder and two murders and then you, then Deborah Winger gets this look on her face and she's sort of like oh really you know and she looks to the corner and in walks the sister of one of the former victims and Rennie turns around and looks and is like oh hey and looks back at Deborah Winger like, what's up? <laughs> you know, because, and, and you know what's up. Legally, that is a witness that is identifying her as the woman that was married to one of the former victims. So that was the first shock, which Rennie, you know, handled that one pretty well because she just looked at her like, I don't know what you think this is going to do. And then Deborah Winger kind of gets a even more... I'm not true with you yet, look. And uh, Rennie turns around and it's the boyfriend that she had an affair with, that Deborah Winger had an affair with. So that noticeably freaks her out. Because first of all, she realizes now that she has been set up, that her mousetrap, this Hawaiian mousetrap, that she had been doing on Deborah Winger was not only known but was being reversed because this guy never died and you know the only one that really died was the private detective but she's going to go down for that along with God knows how many more murders that she's committed but three of which we know of and uh the look on Deborah Winger's face when she springs that trap is phenomenal. But just as phenomenal is the look on Teresa Russell's face because a beast like this woman is not going to be shaken even by that. You know, that personality type is not going to be shaken like a normal person would. She finally got busted. She did have, she was visibly shaken when the boyfriend walked in. But the way she regained her composure and was just like, well, you know, <laughs> what can you do, right? I mean, you win for now because that was kind of the look you know was like okay well the game is still afoot right we'll see how things go <laughs> so yeah it um like i said there's no blood there's no gore really the the private detective's murder was pretty gross uh she basically held him at gunpoint and forced him to hot shot himself with heroin um, and that didn't look pretty. The aftermath didn't look pretty. Um, this, the horror in this movie is more psychological because this is a very, 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 very evil woman. Um, watching Teresa Russell murder these very nice, uh, friendly, wonderful guys that she manipulated into marrying her was really fantastic to watch and very, very scary. Um, the way she was able to murder these people who genuinely loved her. I mean, after all, she created the perf... She, she turned herself into the perfect person that you would love. It's like she would meet you, find out what your interests were, what your personality type was, and she becomes that thing that 
you would find as perfect so of course you're going to be completely in love with that individual and to be showered with that much love and affection and yet the whole time in a safety deposit box you have a needle and poison and waiting for enough enough months to go by for you to kill them and move on to the next one her ability to do that really is scary because there's a lot of people out there with that ability you know sociopaths are scarier than any mass shooter they're scarier they're more they're more terrifying than any brutal crime of passion because mm -hmm. these people are phenomenal in their ability to manipulate and kill without impunity and without a single drop of care and unlike those other type of crimes and murders sociopaths and the way that they can use and abuse and you know do stuff to people is just even more shocking than you just being randomly killed by a murderer having you know your trust and manipulation and love and emotions and everything used by a sociopath I'm sorry to tell you the truth I would a lot rather you know I mean if I had to go out in some kind of ugly way like that I think a lot of us would prefer to do it without a bunch of emotional trauma I mean if I've got to go out that way I would prefer just to be in the wrong place at the wrong time and get butchered by some random serial killer who wasn't like you know I would rather it be that than have it be a sociopath that sucked me dry for years um, manipulating me until the right moment came and they never cared about me at all except as a victim so yeah that's that's one of the horror things in this that's one of the horror aspects of this movie is that it wakes you up to exactly what a sociopath is and trust me i don't think a better sociopath has ever been played than catherine by teresa russell so yes 1987 directed by ronald bass starring deborah winger and teresa russell with some really juicy cameos by a lot of uh, famous people and um, I absolutely love this movie I think that there's probably a lot of you out there who do know about this movie and have seen it if not you should find it what are the watch options it says you can rent it on Prime Video um, You could buy it on DVD for 50 bucks. I've got a collector's item then, don't I? But I'm sure it's a lot cheaper on eBay if you wanted it in your collection. I imagine you could get it for less than 45 bucks from Amazon. They're such a ripoff anyway. Uh, eBay, eBay, eBay is the place. Or Walmart Online. Walmart Online's usually got a lot of good movies uh, for five bucks, six bucks, seven bucks. But, um, yeah, if you want this in your collection, it is absolutely wonderful. I'm very, very glad to have a physical copy of this. Teresa Russell, Deborah Winger, Black Widow, fantastic story. And um, it is definitely one of those quiet psychological horror dramas um, that uh, I like to sit down and calmly watch and get freaked out by. But my favorite part is trying to figure her out yeah that's what this thing is about how is she choosing these men how does she target them the reason that she picks these particular men aside from the money but of course she wants to murder millionaires I mean you know she's probably from the things that they said in the movie she would have to be worth 30 40 million at least just from what you kind of hear throughout the movie this is an extremely filthy rich woman well one of the things that she says one of the taglines that people remember from this movie is when she first approaches that seedy little private detective you know and says i believe that this woman is uh, having an affair with my boyfriend um 
and he's like oh no I don't do that kind of work and she just was kind of like look you are going to do this kind of work because I'm going to tell you two things about me one I am extremely rich and two I am outrageously wealthy so that's the truth I mean she had to be worth 40 50 million dollars I mean just on what you heard about the estates of the guys that she had killed prior to Hawaii so why would a person I mean to tell you the truth <laughs> well there you go I mean that's how I said we don't understand these people because a normal rational person like me or you um, probably would go you know what if I got away with knocking over a, a you know someone and got a ten million dollar payout or something I don't think I would mess with another I mean I would I, I could do I, I think I could make it on ten million you know I'm pretty sure I could invest in dividend stocks and I, th I think I think I would be all right with 10 million I wouldn't have to go and kill another for 10 million and another for 10 million and another for 20 million I mean so why is she doing this you know and but we hear that all the time if you're a watcher of true crime tell me how many times you've looked at the screen and said Chris Watts what why did Chris Watts do that why do people do these things over sex or over a jealous boyfriend or over a jealous girlfriend or uh, for a, a hundred thousand dollar life insurance policy or something like that we don't understand it this takes that to the extreme because this woman is worth 50 million dollars you know that would not be an overestimate in my opinion from what they tell you during the movie uh, so yeah um, love this movie if you haven't seen it, you really should. If you're a collector, this is a wonderful movie to have in your collection. And I will be back next. I'm going to film it in a minute. It's collection update time. It's the last day of November. So I am going to film my November collection update with all of the new things that I added to my collection. All of the new films. I only got two CDs. My speakers are busted, yeah. I've got a guitar amp. Don't know if you know this or not, but you can use a guitar amp. Um, it's not made for music, though. It's made for guitar sounds. So although speaking, like watching a movie or something, is fine through a guitar amp, but um, music, you can listen to it low but if you like you can't jam music on a guitar amp believe it or not it's not created it, it doesn't have the wiring and stuff it's not created for that kind of sound multi-leveled compact sound so yeah but I'll get back to music after that but yes I have plenty of movies as I always do so I'll be doing the update video and uh, thank you for joining me love you miss you bye black widow Deborah Winger, Teresa Russell, 1987, classic, phenomenal movie. Pick it up, and I will see you in the next one. Love you, miss you, bye. Stay scary, and keep screaming very, very loud when appropriate.